Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss about resilience. What do you mean by resilience? How to assess resilience? And also, how to improve our resilience? I am Dr. Suresh Padadmit, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. First, let us define resilience. Friends, please do remember, resilience has been defined by various people in various ways. But however, the commonest accepted definition is, resilience is an ability to bounce back from the adversity or stress or any kind of disruption. One more definition which has been very well accepted is normal functioning despite negative events or circumstances, disruption or change in demands or minimization and personalization. That means if there is any adversity but still the person continues to go or continues to work, continues to functioning as per the societal norms. Moving further, resilient is often measured behaviorally on the basis of person's competence, success in meeting the society's expectation despite having great obstacles. So, in the face of adversity, how a person behaves, how he deals his life is what is resilience. And also, one of the well comprehensive definition is resilience refers to overall physical, mental health and social health in dealing with the adversity. This is Similar to health, the definition of World Health Organization defined health as a complete physical, mental and social well-being. It's not just mere absence of illness. Similarly, resilience has a complete physical health, mental health and also social health. So all three components considers as resilience. Let's understand. The physical health and mental health is usually a part of the core resilience. Social health is a part of what we call it as the resources or the supporting resilience factors. So this is how we are going to discuss. Let's move further. So usually what is the response to any adversity for an animal in a worse adversarial situation? The person may perish or attempted suicide or suicide. So this is the commonest or the person may die. Imagine the adversity may be disaster because of a disaster. The person dies that is perishing. The second one is there is an adversity, denial and avoidance, running away from the situation, avoiding the situation. This is the second commonest. Third one is, yes, there is an adversity, but there is a dysfunction. He is unable to work. It's for a long duration. So that is the third commonest. The fourth is, there is a bounce back, but not to the normal level of functioning. There is some amount of dysfunctioning. So fourth one is, there is adversity. There is a dysfunction, but he, he, he does not achieve the normal functioning, but it's a optimal functioning he does. The fifth one is he bounces back to normal. So this is we consider as yes, he is a good person with to extent of good resilience. But the excellent person is in the face of adversity, he bounces back and his effectiveness increases. That means he learns from this adversity and he moves further and the effectiveness becomes more, functioning becomes more. So these are the people who are very, very successful in the face of disaster. That means if the person in a disaster situation or an adversarial situation, he moves forward, he takes an opportunity and he says in every obstacle, there is an opportunity hidden behind. So that is the person who is very resilient and he accepts the challenge and he overcomes it. So let's understand in a simple term, resilience is a measure of adaptation adapt to learn and grow in adversity situation. Further, what are the way we are measuring? So there are two measurements usually. One is social, another one is core internal resilience. See the core internal resilience are basically to predict, prepare, plan for the forthcoming adversity. That means you plan before in hand. Yes, there is a possibility. There may be an adversity or I may get into adversity because of the situation. So preparing, planning is very essential for and during the adversity, adapting, flexible, changing and not to have a rigid uh, goals or rigid way of working. That is adaptation is very, very essential. Dealing with the loss or a failure of an adversity. You may lose a game, you may lose money, you may lose certain things during the adversity, but able to cope with that. Effectively managing the adversity, even in spite of loss, managing the emotions in the adversarial situation and ability to accept things which is beyond your control. So this is a measurement which usually assesses the core resilience, not the supportive resilience. However, there are supportive resilience. I will talk to that. Coming to the best way 
of anecdotal I can give you is boxing match. Life is a boxing match and you have to prepare. You are a boxer, you have to prepare for the fight. Life is a boxing match. It will punch you. You should be prepared. You may fall down. You may have to get back and again start. The perseveration, what we call it as. So that is what is resilience. So first thing is preparing for the match, building the right mindset, building your physical health by exercise, keeping your body fit, developing the right skills to hit back, learning about the opponents that basically if you are having a boxing match learn about the opponents what are his strengths what are his weakness so avoid the strengths area to attack use the weakness of the opponent to attack so similarly any issue of adversity see what is the strength of this adversity and what is the weakness of the adversity take advantage of the weakness of the adversity expecting setbacks in the same game in a boxing match you may lose that match bounce back or you may fall down because of the punch you have to get back until you get back the match will not be called as you are lost till the last bell rings so the boxing match you may lose you may fall down for a minute and you have to get back bounce back that is very essential and if you lose the championship it is not the end of life rehabilitation and bouncing back again coming to the championship Just sometimes it's one match it may be a complete championship but bouncing back and coming back is one learning from failure and success both is very essential every people say that the failure teaches lesson actually even success also how you win what are the strategies and the strategies to adapt in case of there is a change in the environment coming to the scales of assessment of resilience in many there are many scales some of them are here the resilience scales it has two types of one brief version that is 14 item scale another one is a 25 item scale this is basically a measurement of both internal core resilience factors and also external then another one is Connor Davidson resilience scale it has a 10 item scale and 25 item scale and brief resilience scale that is only six item scale that's a very small one it looks only into the core resilience factor resilience scale for adults resilience scale for adolescents resilience scale for academics there are n number of scales are available but some many of them are copyrighted version before you use it for research take permission from the authors some of them have excellent what we call it as face validity concurrent validity and also sensitivity but however see please do understand some of the scales have been kept prepared only for adversarial like disaster maybe war veterans so it's very specific so know what you are going to assess and see whether which can be used and some scales are only for the corporate sector especially in the employment or for those purpose so look at what is your population depending upon the adversity the skills also changes moving from the assessment association some of the resilience factors that have been association has been formed as the age increases wisdom increases and the person resilience also increases so that's the beauty of resilience that means if you assess for the studies and the research have shown that for every 10 years, there is improvement in the score of 2 to 3 in resilience. That means as you go further, you learn from your adversarial situation, how to respond to the adversarial situation or the stress. Further, very essential is resilience score is inversely proportional to your mental health. That means if you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have substance use, if you're drinking alcohol, you're smoking, that means your resilience factors comes down. That means the resilience course is inversely proportional to mental health and also for physical health. Imagine if your physical health is not good, you have hypertension, you have diabetes, your resilience factor starts coming down. The best example is pandemic. In pandemic, if you are having hypertension and diabetes, that means you your resilience factor is less. That means your body is not prepared to face the pandemic or you are at the high risk factor. That's how the association has been there. So it is for related with the age mental health physical health, that is basically genetic so that is considered as core resilience factors another one is supportive resilience factors external factors how do you understand this internal and external if you look at this the human body is considered as an internal environment inside the body that is maintaining good physical health genetic makeup family history of diabetes hypertension or you have a family history of depression family history of mental illness 
that means your core genetic component is already vulnerable in the face of adversity there is a possibility of you compensating so that is very essential but however you have to make your attempts to improve your physical health improve your mental health doing exercise maybe doing yoga doing relaxation knowing your strengths knowing your weaknesses knowing your genetic makeup basically looking at your family history and what are the situation you bogged down and how to improve yourself but however this genetic makeup you can't change at this point of time science has not gone to that level to make a genetic modification but however let me remind you though there is a problem in the genetic but like suppose imagine the family history of alcohol dependence syndrome is there your father is drinking but however if you are able to avoid using alcohol or any other substance that means you have changed the environment and you did not allow your genetics to take over the environment and becoming alcohol dependent so you also have a play to role accepting and dealing with disability because of certain issues in your life you may develop disability for example you may be an excellent resilient person meet with meeting with an accident and losing your limb accepting it again they are starting a new life and moving further that is resilience and personal meaning in life what do i want to achieve why i am here what is the goal of life so that comes a internal environment it may be you can call it as spirituality it may call it as various other things coming to the external environment that we call it as supportive resilience factor that is in person social network and support i'm not talking about facebook friends i'm not talking about whatsapp friends you may have lakhs you may have millions followers but nobody will come for your help it is in person having a social network and support not virtual support physical support that's basically you meeting a person in daily and he coming for your help that is one family support real family support spiritual and religious factor that is belief on god belief on what we call it as spiritual factors there are many number of studies which they have found that especially in cancer patient having religiosity having spirituality as a good outcome and also they cope very well in the adversity of having a cancer diagnosis help seeking behavior that is going and seeking help these are the factors help in resilience to conclude my dear friends resilience is ability to bounce back and having excellent core resilience factor is a plus but however you can improve upon that improve upon your supportive resilience factors that is social network in person and also having a good family support having a good family uh, interaction communication and also life knocks you down life is not a smooth road it will knocks to you down it is ability to get back persevere and fight back that is what is called as resilience my dear friends so please see how you can improve on your resilience till date there are n number of studies looking at the pathology during adversarial situation there is a disaster what are the different types of mental illness psychological problems were looked upon but now slowly in the past decade in the adversity like disaster why there are many people who form very well during adversity what are the factors in them which makes them to work very efficiently during disaster so those are resilient factors those are resilient people who that's where the life moves on and these are the people who is going to adapt for the change so thank you very much for your valuable time if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel thank you stay safe